Good afternoon everybody, my name is Maya the King, and today we're taking a look at a little game that just released on Steam earlier today called Graduated, and before we go further, if you hear anything in the background, I apologize. I now have two dogs, and I have two kids. Uh, one of those dogs, however, is my mom's that I'm watching while she's off somewhere else. But, I have nowhere else to go for my recording, and they might end up being in the background of this one, so I apologize for that first and foremost. Now, according to Steam, you play as a freshly graduated college student, and now you get to choose how you push forward with life. Move to a new city, find a new job and a new home, forge new relationships, and build yourself up from the ground into someone remarkable. It's a life simulator. Overall, when I found out about this game, I was kind of interested in it. It's a legit life simulator kind of game, but it's side-scrolling, and due to the lack in specific detailed graphics, the game saves space to give you more content, freedom, and choice. Now, I love that idea. You don't need great graphics to have a great game. Now, this game is in early access, but as some of you may know, that excuse only takes you so far. Now, for me on Steam, it was $14, developed by Love7 and published by BD Games. So I jumped into this thinking it might be a fun little game, a nice life simulator that I could use to kill time over the next few weeks, and my first experience was pretty negative. As I jumped in, the text bubbles, which I couldn't control, were passing by way too fast for me to keep up. And I'm a really fast reader. If I couldn't keep up, then I really feel for other people who definitely won't be able to keep up and know what's going on. Basically what happens is your friend goes off to some town after she graduated and wants to open up her own tea shop. I, I think that's what it was. Meanwhile, you're working a cubicle one day after you graduated and you get a message from her telling you that you, she opened up her business. So you're all like, well, if she can do it, then so can I. So you rush off, quitting your job, and you go to start your new life. Kind of like Stardew Valley. But it's right about there that you actually get to start playing the game, and it's also there where you start running into problems. Now, stability-wise, the game ran great. It was smooth, never crashed, never froze. And I really, really wanted to like this game, but I, I just, I, I couldn't really, I, I can't really. I was immediately frustrated by, by some of the things in this game. Now, I don't care if it's early access or not, I have to judge it based on its release, not on what it will one day become. It's basically unplayable. Now, the gameplay mechanic itself isn't that bad. But it's the nuances and it's the user interface, the bad translation, the lack of tutorial or hint system that just really made me have an awful first experience here. The UI is too small. The gameplay is a bit confusing. I mean, sometimes you can click on things and sometimes you can't with no explanation as to why or why not. I can't even really describe to you my experience. Hell, I'm not even sure if this video is going to be long enough for me to upload right now because it all basically boils down to the only really bad thing about this game that ruins it, and it's its translation. On the bright side, if they ever get it translated, then, or, you know, get the rest of their translation fixed, then this game looks like it could end up being pretty fun. But let's, let's move on from that and talk about the rest of the game. Basically, you are dropped into this city, then it tells you to go get a home, and that's it. It doesn't tell you anything else. And since the game isn't fully translated in a lot of parts, and since what it does have translated is pretty awful, it's almost impossible to figure this shit out. I did eventually find a notice board, and on that board there were two ads for housing, though I only saw one at the time. I went and rented an apartment, after half an hour of searching around the town first. Then I realized I had no money, so I had to go find a job. I went back to the notice board, of course, because that seemed to be the way to find things, and I found a job at a clothing store. So I went there and applied and got the job. But unlike in other games where you work at the place and you get paid and it's a little time skip thing, this game wants to make you actually manually do the job yourself. And I know how it sounds, but hang on. What I mean by that is that it's the dumbest thing ever, okay? They want you to spend your own cash to buy their product. So if you don't have any cash, you're screwed. And then they want you to go and sell them to other random people, which was already a damn function before you even had the job. Like you could already sell things to people before you had the job. So basically what they're doing is nothing. Getting that job as a salesman at the store, at the clothing store does nothing. They want you to buy their product and sell it to other people, but you can already sell things to other people before you get the job. I could go into the store and buy their clothes and then go out and sell them to somebody and I didn't need to apply for the job at all. Like, you can do that. You could already do that. So what was the point of accepting that job in the first place? So in this job, why are you making me buy the clothing objects and then go out and sell them? It doesn't make any sense at all. I thought it was working for you. So that's really badly designed. I haven't found any other job offers, except for one about joining some stupid nightclub, but he said you basically have to have your own vehicle for it before he'll hire you, and he's practically advertising right in front of you when you enter the game. Why make something so obvious, so painfully advertised if you won't be able to do it without a car, which obviously is going to take more money than you could possibly have in the beginning? 
After a while, I just decided to give up on that whole trying to get money thing. I did eventually rent an apartment and it had nothing but a shower in it. I bought three sausage sandwiches to fill up my hunger because my guy was starving, but together they only filled up about 10%. All three of them. I, I don't know what they eat over there, but in America, the fattest country on earth, three sausage sandwiches will fill most people up. And while I'm on the subject of things irritating me about this game, it doesn't save your progress. It didn't save mine. Or if it does, it, it didn't tell me how or let me do it. Upon returning to the game for a second look at it, I found that all the progress I had made was gone. I had to recreate my character and start all over again. So I looked at the UI, there's no save button. I looked around the map, there's no saving spot that I could find. So over an hour of my gameplay time and the progress that I made, gone. The job I had gotten, the relationships I had built up, my popularity increase, and my house, they were all gone. I had to start all over again. Nothing makes you want to quit playing and stop playing a game than when it, when it won't save your progress. Now, don't get me wrong, not everything in this game is bad. The idea of it, while it might not be original, a life simulator, it is handled in a unique way, and I do love the idea of how they approached this kind of simulator. The look might not be super awesome, but it's kind of cute and charming, which also works. And then surprisingly enough, the sound effects are really well done. The music and the sound of rushing waves in the background all sound right and work well to create a sort of ambiance here. And there's a lot of details here. I mean, you can create your own home piece by piece, I, I think. You can buy different furniture and upgrade different skills, which can make your house look better, or those skills will make you be better at jobs or better at doing certain things. Different clothing that you can wear, different food and drinks that you can eat and devour, and the list of different things that you can participate in or handle is immense. I mean, the level of freedom and personal creativity is incredible here. And honestly, despite the awful translation going on here, for an early access game, that price tag is pretty darn reasonable. Plus it has this kind of combat system, at least when it came to negotiating or bargaining, almost a kind of turn-based card drawing combat system where if you do enough damage to your opponent, they consent and accept your deal or whatever. And it has a relationship that you can build, a popularity meter and more stats and stuff like it that I'm sure will affect something down the line. And not only that, but it even has a kind of like a like a, an adventurer kind of thing where you can explore different areas or or you can go deep diving for treasures and whatnot. I mean, it offers you a lot of different experiences here. But overall, at the at the time of recording, at the time of release, the game is not worth your time unless you can read the language here. I don't know which country developed this game, and I don't know what language that is, but I think it's Chinese. And I hope I don't offend anyone, and if I do, then I deeply apologize. But for anyone who can't understand this language, then I highly recommend you do not buy this game. At least not now. Maybe in the future, they'll have a, an update or something to, you know, get more of the stuff here translated and get a better translation overall because what they do have translated isn't really that good. I mean, the dialogue is in English, but some of the UI isn't and most of the stores aren't. So it's almost impossible to figure out what is what or where to go or how to do anything. And that lack of a tutorial or a hint system on how to get started or where to go or what to do will just leave you scrambling around for a while. So that mixed in with the horrible translation and you're just... You're so confused and lost. I mean, you can't click on almost anything. So how was I to know I could even click on the bulletin board and learn stuff when it won't let me click on anything else? The game never told me shit. So yeah, I highly recommend waiting for this one or maybe just passing on it entirely if this just isn't your kind of thing. I mean, the game is rated positive on Steam, but not one of those reviews at the time of recording was in English. Uh, I was really interested in this game, which was why I checked it out, but it's not meant for us English speakers right now. Wait for an update and get that better translation before you take a look at this. The point is, right now, not worth it. Wait for that translation update. So that's all the time I got for this episode, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I hope the video was entertaining or at least informative. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.